be joined by two very special guests, Dilip Pat and R. Sri Shankar. They're here to talk to us from the sidelines of the Prabhudas Leela, their small and mid-cap conference. And so no prizes for guessing that they are joining us with some small and mid-cap investment ideas. That's coming up next. My sense is that... Uh... Well, R. Sri Shankar and Dilip Bhatt now join us from the sidelines of the Pravudas Leeladhar Small and Mid-Cap Conference that's currently underway in Mumbai. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us on Closing Bell. If I can start with you first, Dilip, uh, can you sort of uh, describe to us the kind of appetite, continuing appetite for small and mid-cap stocks, see, given the, the run-up that we've already seen in those spaces in the past recent months? Well, Menka, yes, I think uh, the demand continues to be pretty good. Uh, the interest seems to be pretty good uh, in all these uh, companies. I think surely, I think uh, the way the frontline stocks have really moved up, I think everybody is looking for a good value uh, over here. But uh, I think by and large, what people are uh, still uh, understanding is that since we are in a multi-year bull run, so I think that is where uh, the mid-caps are the ones which can really do pretty well. So I think that being the case, I think uh, on the same corollary, I think the interest for the mid-cap continues to be pretty good and interesting. And I think we have identified quite a few of them over here where I think on a long-term basis they can give reasonably very good returns. The report, what have you identified? How have you identified them? Given the fact that uh, uh, when people talk about the Indian investable universe, they say perhaps it's just about 20% of the entire or 30% of the entire market if you're being charitable is really investable. So how are you, what, on what basis are you picking these stocks? Uh, because these, these are high risk, but of course could give you great returns. Well, you're absolutely right. You know, what had happened was last time round, if you had seen the way the mid caps had gone up and the way they collapsed, I think a couple of things came out very clearly that either they did not have the kind of the management bandwidth to really uh, cope up with the scaling up of the turnover and the operations. And of course, the lack of fiscal expertise and discipline, I think all this got compounded. So I think keeping that thing fresh in mind, so we were still trying to pick out, select some of those uh, companies where we thought that the management can be trusted for a scaling up of operations where they'll be able to cope up with the change. And uh, second, they'll be able to handle the growth uh, pretty well. And of course, most important is that the company will observe good fiscal discipline, focus on the RO, uh, return on investments, focus on the ROC and on the cash flows. So I think we have, keep, we have kept that in mind and tried to select as many companies within that valuation or within those parameters as possible. Sri, what's looking most exciting for you in, from the universe that you've picked up? Oh, Shantal, uh, uh, let me put it up this way. We like uh, a lot of these companies which are domestic economy focused um, as uh, we believe that going into the uh, uh, in the growth story, it's a first the domestic economy which will grow much faster. And uh, because what's happening around the globe, so exports apart from IT probably will become a bit subdued. Um, and it's a domestic story. In the domestic story, we like stocks like you know, Sangvi Movers, then we have got Action Construction, we have got Canfin Homes, then we have got um, uh, Sundaram Finance, we have got plenty of stocks like that. Okay. Yesterday also we had uh, a series of companies, which probably a niche export companies also. I'm just reading out some of these companies. Uh, so are, are, you going, uh, how, are you going sector top down or are you going bottom up uh, in, in, in mid cap uh, and uh, small cap free or is it obvious that in, in, in this uh, segment you really need to go uh, bottom up? See, uh, if you actually look at from a top-down approach, you probably like a financial services sector uh, industry per se, because financial service industry is going to be the first beneficiary of a boom in the domestic economy, um, uh, or for that matter, if the economy booms itself. So now, uh, domestic economy, or, or, the, or rather the financial services sector itself has got its own problems. There are large number of uh, 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 restructured loans, plus NPAs, etc., a combination of it facing the public sector banks. Apart from public sector banks, then you have got the private sector banks, then you have got NBFCs, and also uh, a large number of, uh, or rather, uh, a decent size of uh, mid-cap uh, or uh, mid-tier private sector banks, old generation uh, mainly. So you have got a combination of these uh, banks. And what we think is that all of them have got a role to play Everyone should see 
a sustained growth story emerging. Some of these uh, banks, especially some of these financial services companies, depending upon their growth, will need more capital infusion, especially the PSU banks, will need larger capital infusion by the government, at the pace of which it's a question mark right now. So what we think is from a top-down approach, yes, we like the financial services, we like the housing finance companies, then we like some of the capital goods players which pro will benefit. Uh, uh, again, uh, we have to bear in mind that a lot of these capital goods players will benefit at the end of the cycle or not at the beginning of the cycle, only when the cycle has actually started to move up. So we have got a large number of companies. Within those companies, or within those sectors, what are the things that we like and that's what we are probably cherry picking at this stage. That exercise still goes on and as the growth in the domestic economy picks up, it will become more clearer. Dilip, you can just uh, can talk us through specifics of, say, a Canfin home because I, I picked this up as an example of uh, uh, housing finance companies. They are undoubtedly a great company, but all of them selling pretty high. Some, some of them selling maybe, uh, at maybe four to five times uh, a book. Well, I think Canfin homes is not uh, that, that expensive is. at the moment. Uh, I think this is, the stock price certainly has gone up. But this is a, a company where you will uh, you will see a sustainable 30 to 35 percent growth. We have seen a very proactive management at the top, which is really driving this business. They are also trying to substitute uh, loan against property. You know, they are trying to increase the share of that, so which will increase the overall uh, yield for the companies and the NIMS. I think uh, they will still. What we think is they will show us 30-35% sustainable growth at the bottom line with an asset quality which is definitely stable and of course an ROE is around 15-16% which for a growing company is quite okay. So I think it still has a good uh, scope uh, for it to really go up. Sri Sundaram Finance is another company that you are uh, bullish on. Yeah, uh, again, it's, a, it's again a, a typically top-down story and uh, uh, no questions about the management quality and the kind of a growth prospects that they have. And if we continue to believe the growth continue to happen and, or the economy continues to grow, the, all the segments that they are present will continue to show a faster growth. The, then if you, the, your question about valuation, uh, essentially if I go back, you know, even in 2007-8, if I look at the one year forward product, uh, multiple of the market was somewhere around 25 times. I am not defending 25 times. The, the, the last 10 year, one year forward multiple average for the market has been somewhere around 15x. So we are already at somewhere around 16.7x one year forward. Mm -hmm. And you, when the markets have moved up from 5,500 right now to around 8,500 levels, so closer to 8,500 levels, it has been a one way bull rally. So you will actually see pullbacks. And in the bull rally, you actually see a lot of these valuations uh, expand or the price earning multiples expand, price to book expand. So it will actually, what we will see is a expansion in both price earning multiples as well as price to book valuations. And it's going to be a function of the market. So I, I think it's going to remain here as we believe and as Dilipa has mentioned earlier, you actually expect to go to be a multi-year bull run for the domestic economy growth. Uh, and if that's going to come true, the valuation we think will become more expensive going forward. In some of the other spaces or stocks that you seem to like, and I'm looking at some of the stocks, uh, you know, that it does seem are your picks in this space. Uh, uh, Shri, can you talk about Mindtree, uh, JK Lakshmi Cement, Britannia Industries, and why these stocks continue to look attractive to you at this point? Uh, Menka, again, uh, that's, those form a part of our top picks for a, uh, and strategy would be do on a monthly basis. We, we continue to believe that Britannia, Britannia as a house, we have been bullish mm -hmm. from probably 450 levels. That done very well. It is probably for six months, it did not perform very well, but it performed and it has been on a great role. role. The new product launchers, the kind of advantage that's have happening and the kind of valuation the company is quoting at, plus the, the way that entire market is opening up, all makes us believe that as a consumption story, Britannia will continue to improve. That's number one. Number two, a lot of those commodities, raw material costs have not been moving up. So you should also actually see uh, 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 an expansion in margins. Number three, the quarterly result. I think Britannia has been one result which has surprised the investment community and the analyst community quite a lot with that expansion of margins. 
So our analysts and we continue to believe that it's a good story continuing to happen. Just, just on the issue of Britannia, Shri, no, just on the issue of Britannia, are you seeing a pickup in consumption demand as yet? Because the, the, you know the signs are very conflicting. And if not, you know how how sustainable is this ability to expand margins from here on? So, I, I, you know that's the question mark, I suppose, on the stock. Great company, great products, but just curious to know. Benka, I think the consumption story. If if you are you seeing a consumption demand increase, the answer is. No, right now. Exactly. It may be more of a status quo. What we expect to see is that if these, it, the, the initiative that has been taken around and that initiative fructifies into an economic growth, it will necessarily need to a consumption demand growth as well. And that's the premise at which we have approached and that's where we continue to remain bullish. And to question about the questions about J.K. Lakshmi, Mindtree, etc. Again, J.K. Lakshmi, if you look at the cement uh, sector itself, you know, the valuation that you pay probably for a new green fee project is around $120, $110 to $120 per uh, EV per ton. So if you look at the valuations across, starting from Gujarat Tambuja to, uh, um, uh, to Ultratech, uh, to many of these companies, uh, the valuations have become stretched. This stock is still below 100. So still we believe there is a lot more scope to go. And on top of it, they have actually gone to a market where you should actually also see the highest margins as well. So all these makes us believe that there is a story, still there is a value to be recovered from that particular stock. Again, Mindtree, the stock has probably become a four-bagger from the way we have, when we have re started recommending it. My, our analyst still believes that it's just a good story because they are focusing on it. The growth is getting delivered, but these stocks probably do not have not moved up uh, at one go to that 100 percent, 200 percent. But it has been a, a, a steady move over a period of time. So all these forms of uh, part of our topics and strategy, and we continue to believe that these are the stories that we like. Uh, a combination of um, uh, 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 mid, mid caps. And some of them are large caps uh, in the financial services like State Bank of India, ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, etc. I think Federal Bank is also on your list, Sri. Yes, that's a mid cap, one of the mid cap banks which we continue to like. Okay. Dilip, you know, I, I mean, we've been talking about sectors and stocks that you're like, but what about sectors and stocks that don't look very appealing anymore? For instance, in the early part of this rally, we saw a big build up in several of the mid sized capital good companies uh, or industrials, if you want to call it that. Uh, in the recent months, we've seen a big run up in several of the dis consumer discretionary stocks, the white good companies in the mid cap space. Are these areas that continue to interest you? Well, I think the consumer discretionary continues to uh, look pretty interesting because in spite and despite whatever is the economic environment, they, they have been showing a reasonably good uh, uh, kind of a sales growth, uh, nothing which is really very good, but still uh, looking at the background of the circumstances, they are still very good. But I think cyclicals are the ones, uh, the metal space is one, which doesn't really appear to be all that great at the moment. I think looking at what is happening in the world, and maybe even in India it should not be an exception, overall I think that is a space which probably will continue to face a lot of competition, and I think that uh, margins will continue to be under pressure. Okay, a final question then, Dilip. Uh, you know, in terms of portfolio allocation, what are some of the investors at your conference saying in terms of continuing uh, funds in, this, in these spaces of mid-cap and small-cap, uh, are there, is the fund momentum reducing, so to speak, at all, uh, even if there are several bottom-up stories that look very interesting? Min I think, Minka, uh, as far as this mid-cap and small space is concerned, I think uh, it has to be a stock-specific case rather than uh, a sectorial approach. Hmm. Sectoral approach is certainly uh, going to be there, but I think... Um, uh, the approach is going to be more, you just cherry pick quite a few of the stocks and then you play them. Because if you really want to play the sector, then you really have to play the, the frontline stocks, which is where you can play, uh, whether it's banking or capital goods, you can acquire some of the frontline stocks. But in the mid cap, I think in a way to use a word, uh, a little sector agnostic, people are going to buy across the sectors and look at the values on a bottom up uh, basis. 
All right, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for helping our viewers cherry pick some interesting stock ideas that make the top of your list. Uh, uh, there you've got it, Dilip Pat and R. Sri Shankar from the Prabhudas Leeladhar Small and Mid Cap Ideas Conference. Well, with that, let's slip in a short break. We'll return with our stock.